Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Derek Mazzoni. You know that because there's a sign with my name on it below that. Uh, and if you know me and you're on my social media feed, you know how important music is to me, uh, fundamentally important. And in light of that importance, uh, I think about the ecosystem uh, relating to music. And uh, part of that ecosystem is, of course, the venues um, and the people that bring artists from all over the world uh, to our shores, wherever those shores may be, and take risks, a new artist, and create opportunities for you to fall in love with music, to fall in love with each other, and um, and make sure that um, the, this generation and the generation after will continue to uh, thrive in this beautiful musical ecosystem. So anytime I'm in New York City, I do a few things. A I go to a falafel shop on McDougal, I get a slice of pizza, and I go to this place. Uh, it's called Drum, and it's in Manhattan, um, and it is a, a venue that I've loved for a long, long time. And in light of what's been going on with venues and music in general, it's going through a difficult uh, period, shall we say. And in uh, the next, next week... Um, it's going to have a fundraiser, and that fundraiser will be tied to a free live stream concert with footage and performances of some of the fabulous artists from all over the world that have graced the stages of Drum. And I wanted to uh, take the channels that I have and, um, and get people to actually go to the GoFundMe campaign and support this great venue in the city, in a part of the city, which used to have a bunch but doesn't have so much anymore. And... Uh, especially venues that will take a risk on artists from all over the world. And um, so this is a moment right now to support Drum. And in light of that, I've got um, Mehmet Dede, who is the uh, the programming artistic director of Drum, and Serdar Ilhan, who is the co-founder. Hello. Welcome. Hello, Derek. How are you? Doing well. Doing well, as well as can be expected. Um, tell me the history of Drum, please. Let's get this started. We're on a mission here. All right. Uh, okay, I started uh, 2007. Mm -hmm. And ago. with my two other partner. And uh, we used to work with Mehmet together, uh, Maya Meihane, which is a small uh, restaurant and bar on Avenue uh, B between 6 and 7. The whole thing started there, actually. We create the gypsy festival there and also we create you know the world music scene like three three nights a week we used to do like turkish greek and balkan music this is the bar, bulgarian bar right this is no 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 bar. that's that's mahanata it's different i i okay. become very you know a little short of the time partner with him too but just before the drum no it, okay. it was different this is maya mehane this is like a mehane means taverna uh in turkish it's like okay. uh, there is with the music one there is without music one but people goes there like having a fun and eating small messes and drinking you know that kind of place okay that was the first one actually in uh, new york congratulations then, um, thank you then uh, after that place is finished in two two years right we met two or two and a half years, Three years we closed months. yeah we closed because there was not enough uh, time in the lease then two of my friends offered me to do something together. They were working in the Wall Street area. They are not in the music business. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Mehmet was working that time also in uh, Giant Step. Then we decided to open Drum. Mehmet left the Giant Step, and basically we start together. I, I have always partner, but they were always silent. You know, okay. my, my partner was Mehmet, basically. OK. That's, okay. that's how we started. Uh, Mehmet, me, and the beginning, Bryce was helping us uh, from uh, Winterfest to book the place. Uh -huh. We grew up together last 13 years working together, and here we are. Okay. And didn't plan a pandemic, didn't plan to get hit yeah, like this. we didn't. <laughs> uh, a lot of places have gone under, 
um, which is uh, which is incredibly sad. But you guys are still holding on. Um, how is that possible? Uh, actually, it's uh, I, I like to thank my uh, landlord because uh, I told him like what's going on. He's he's following that too, and he says like you know, okay, we'll wait. Basically, he's waiting. Okay. And we're waiting. As you know, we have approved for some uh, grants. Mm -hmm. If we can able to get this grant, I think we can able to continue. But right now, we need money to reopen again. To reopen again. Mm -hmm. um, I am so glad that we're having this conversation right now for multiple levels. Um, one is I'm a fan. Um, not just a colleague, but a really a fan. The other part is um, I... It's such an interesting time for Turkish music. It's such an interesting time for the artists that you guys first brought in because that was a big risk. Most people didn't really know the the depth and the legacy of uh, the scene that was going on in the Balkans, in Turkey, in Bulgaria, and beyond. But now all of the kids fucking love the shit. You know, you've got like Alton Goon and others coming yeah. in. You got you got these like these crate diggers that are going deep into uh, into some really interesting work and it feels like if drone has this moment you guys will be packing and you'll be doing three four nights three four shows a night you'll have to you have to start you know filling the stage at four o'clock in the afternoon and going till four o'clock at, at night because it feels like there's so much potential right now in this space we just need that little moment to keep you going to keep so, so that the beauty of the next step will happen um, do you agree? I, I agree, definitely. Okay. It feels like, you know, there's craziness, of course, in a pandemic, but after, it, it, there's so much potential there. Um, the it other actually part... reminds me of, if I may, Derek, go, go, it, go, reminds me, it reminds me of the time right before we opened Drome, because um, I had left my previous job, and by the way, I see a poster from one of the shows that we used to do back in the day, the Sunset Yeah, yeah. yeah um, Boris and I. <laughs> exactly. So in 2008, uh, I was working as a local and independent uh, promoter. This is around the time when Sarda was also um, getting in business uh, with Drum. And this is sort of like when we decided, let's do this together on the artistic side, because we felt that, as you said, there was a momentum that was building uh, with Balkan music, with Mediterranean music. But not just that. I mean, we were able to really uh, introduce many different styles of music from all different parts of the world, you know, mm -hmm. through the stage that we had at Drum. So we had that, you know, medium. And it really reminded me of that time when right before opening, we had no idea, you know, how people would respond to our programming and our offerings in the East Village. Um, certainly the club that we preceded, um, that preceded us, was a nightclub that was open a couple nights uh, a week and only doing DJ stuff. So we had to kind of rethink uh, the entire operation because we wanted this to be a live music club. So we tore down the stage, we moved the stage to another area within the same venue. Uh, we completely gutted the place. And truthfully speaking, those who came could only recognize that, well, I remember this L shape here, but aside from that, I really don't remember what this place was. So we had to rethink physically as well as programming wise, how we could really um, introduce music to the East Village community and have their support. And at that time, we had no idea how we how people would respond. Maya was yeah. a very small operation that was really more like a restaurant than anything. This was supposed to be a club, a real club, live music club. So now we had sort of like 11, 12, 13 years later, we we're almost at the same place in that we are we would like to reopen after one year of no shows. Yeah. But we have this grand ambition and this great desire to connect with people, as you have said, you know, and hope that people will come. But it's a it's a little unknown. I mean, we've never been here before, right? So we're trying to kind of reassess the situation and see what will work this time. Because what we knew before March 2020, you know, will be relevant, but certainly not to the same extent. You know, there's a new norm. There's a new reality. And in fact, that norm will we continue to we will continue to shape that norm so it's all up to us people like you people like us people who are our colleagues in the independent music community who will shape sort of like the next phase of especially independent live music so um manhattan brooklyn you know this is global but let's get a little regional here right now 
something like Drum feels like it could should be in Brooklyn, but you guys you guys are still holding on and keeping that that spirit of Manhattan lively, which is the thing that really struck me. Uh, because anytime I live in Seattle right now, anytime I'm in New York, it's like the pull to Brooklyn is strong. There's a bunch of stuff going on there, and I'm sad because it used to be Manhattan. You know, you would go to Brooklyn. God, I sound like yeah. such an old fart. But you would go to Brooklyn for the after hours parties. You would go to Brooklyn, you know, for like you know the shit that was going on. Now, different. And so for the fact that you guys are st- are, are are keeping the faith and and uh, you know in the East Village, Lower East Side, and all of those places, it's super important to do that. And I, I applaud you for for doing that. But I'm wondering, is that in the back of your mind? Is like, okay, we're going to open up again. It's Manhattan. Are people going to be there? I believe they will because, you know, it's still New York. They want to go out. But has that been part of the process? You know, like, are you guys thinking about this at all? Like Brooklyn, New York, or is, am I being just too too regional? I mean, personally speaking, I thought about it a while ago. When we, re- when we opened, actually, um, there was a trend towards Brooklyn. It had started actually in the mid-2000s. And mm-hmm. by now, 15 years later, it definitely, Brooklyn has definitely emerged as its second and different market than Manhattan. Certain bands would do a show in Manhattan, but then they would add a second show in Brooklyn as if it yeah. was a different market. So there's that reality, but there's also another face of it. In the face of you know what's going on here, I feel that, that the pandemic hit every part of the city. I mean, every country really in the world has been affected in some ways. And the city is not, not any different really. And there's still a lot that um, people draw from in Manhattan uh, and you know musically speaking Brooklyn has definitely come a long way and I feel that so many of our colleagues are there experimenting with new styles of music I understand what you say you know artistically maybe this venue should have been maybe part of the Brooklyn renaissance if you will but mm-hmm. you know there's also a renaissance that's happening in the Lower East Side in the East Village and we're really part of that and in fact if you think about it pretty much you know many of the venues that are around us are either indie rock clubs or singer-songwriter type places. There are some outliers like us, like New Blue. I would also put Joe's Pub sort of like in that yeah. in that mix uh, because they do alternative programming. And all of us bring something different to the table. And I think that's the beauty of East Village and certainly why I think that East Village made sense. I mean, certainly this venue belongs in a downtown area, not above 14th Street, again, from the perspective of programming. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, Sarda has a more personal connection to the East Village, because he lived on 8th Street and St. Mark's for many years, so maybe I'll let him speak to that. Talk to me about that. Uh, yeah, uh, what I'm hearing from the people after the pandemic, in New York, I mean, New York City, I mean, Manhattan is going to change too. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody's talking about like uh, 70s or 80s, Manhattan is going to come in back. It's going to come back. I, I know I'm, I'm living in Upper East Side. In my building, usually uh, people like my age or even, uh, you know, uh, older. But I have a bunch of, you know, young people like 20s, 30s, like seven, eight apartment change. They just moved in. Prices going down. I I, th- I think Manhattan is gonna, going to change. It's going to be go back to the 80s, 90s. Like, you okay. Know, it's it's makes me a little more uh, comfortable about it. Okay. Because I was I was worried about it, you know, like uh, we, what we're doing in uh, New York is uh, what's going on lately in Brooklyn. It was it was kind of you know. It wasn't your town. Yeah, it's it, it and uh, East Village changed. Whole East Village moved to Williamsburg, and yeah. you know, Williamsburg they created, yeah. and now they move Bushwick because the you know the, all the costs the and the prices goes up. You know, we have yuppies around now in East Village. But, but it's interesting in the kind of music you guys are programming, which will be manifesting in uh, in this in uh, in the in the World Fest, which is March twenty sixth to the thirty first. If you go to GoFundMe, look for Drone World Fest. You will find that there. And support this organization. Support what's going on. Um, uh, but the the artists you guys are bringing in, the artists you guys are 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 presenting. There's a space for them right now. Before it was like, what is that? Now it's like. I, I'm really feeling like this is the time. And to your point, um, 80s, 70s, Manhattan, with this kind of um, flavor, uh, which could create something that will be able, if we're still around, you know, inshallah, mm-hmm. um, where that will be here. 
and that we'll be able to to talk about this. Like this was the time that this happened, and when uh, Tom reached out. And when I saw this, I was like, I need to do my part to make sure that Drome is there just for my own reasons. Because I'm in New York a couple of times a year, if not more. I want you guys there. I want to be able to go there. So, you know, I still haven't DJed there. So that's that's, that's a sin. Um, you need to rectify but, that. <laughs> well, um, but it's be, it would just be really great to to um, to also see how Drome deals with um, and takes up the, uh, takes advantage of the opportunity that drone could be global like we we used footage from uh, you, the Mamas Baba Ganoush show from drone um, and if you look at that on uh, on our summer site it's there and it's such a great room and people love it and it's so easy to dance and it's just it's it's needed at this time where artists and these cultures and these ideas and these concepts where music can really create a powerful experience for people who come in, who start dancing, who start moving, who start falling in love with something that is in a language they don't understand, that is in a rhythm they had no relationship with at all growing up, that is tied to uh, a history that really opens up their hearts and their souls in a way that um, nothing else can. And you need a space for that to happen. And that space needs to happen in New York City. It needs to happen in Manhattan. It needs to happen in this, in this one place where people from all different parts of the world, they go to New York and they, you know, A, they think they've been to America. They've been to New York, but they've still been to, you know, a part of America, which is this, this uh, top of the mountain, kind of like a little like space for them to feel like every moment is an Instagram moment or every moment that they want to be shared. So I, I, I need to stress everybody, right, to say right now, please support this effort. It's not just a New York thing. It really is a global thing. And it is a thing for, um, for, to make sure that the, the space we're all going to be in post-pandemic will be as fruitful and as uh, powerful as possible. This is interesting because we just finished our KXP Fund Drive. So I'm in full, like, Give money, give money, give money. This is important mode. So you guys caught me just at the right moment. But let's shelve that for a second. Who's playing and why are they amazing? Well, we have actually quite a lot of uh, amazing performances. And Sada is showing the, the poster right now. Okay. There are 30 performers on the bill, uh, six days. Uh, each set is about Chief. an hour mm -hmm. and a half long. And each set will be actually repeated twice. So once at 2 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, and a second set, the same identical set at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The 2 p.m. corresponds to uh, roughly 8 to 9 p.m. in Europe, mm -hmm. depending on where you are in the evening. And then the 8 p.m. in the U.S. obviously um, corresponds to evening hours on the East Coast and then late afternoon on the West Coast. So we're really trying to reach a broader segment with the timing element. Um, so those who watch the 2 p.m. set will see the same thing again at 8 p.m., but we feel that the audiences will be a little different. Uh, because precisely this is the reason why we wanted to have so many international performers yeah. uh, join this build. These are not just American performers. Some are, some are local from New York, some are from other parts of the U.S. Yeah. And, you know, you've beautifully uh, summarized, you know, what DROM really stands for, which is cultural diversity. And, mm -hmm. you know, we really see our roles as um, um, cultural, um, um, some kind of diplomacy, cultural diplomacy. And yeah. it's not just through drum, the venue, but we also have two other segments that we uh, use as a medium and a platform. One is our uh, festival, the New York Gypsy Festival, which we mm -hmm. can talk about later if you'd like to. But then we also produce tours around the country, mm -hmm. um, actually around the country and also Canada too. So these are North American tours. Both Sarda and myself, we produce um, Perform, we bring performers from other countries and then tour with them in the United States so that you know they can also perform in Chicago and SF and LA and tech in Texas and C in Seattle actually you know I brought a couple of my gypsy brass bands to, to Seattle to some of the local venues and this is really important work because if if, if it wasn't for um, anyone on the ground boots on the ground it would be very difficult for these bands to actually tour in the United States so forget about hosting them in New York at our venue, they wouldn't be able to simply come. So yeah. it's also, there's an economical uh, element to it. And not only that, it really helps with widening their audiences. And we work with a lot of other colleagues, performing arts centers and festivals around the country to really introduce these types of performers. So a lot of the performers you see actually on that bill, the 30 performers, um, almost all of them perform that drum. Um, and not only that, we toured with them in the United States, those that came from outside the United States. And those that performed that drum, they performed several different times that we call them 
family. Mm -hmm. um, so these are all alumni of the drum family, if you will. And it's also it telling um, because you once we start again, you know, shows open up. We we're doing this now almost reflectively. But come, uh, you know, last February, it was like, you want me to do what on a video camera and mm. talk about what? Now it's like, yeah, this is drum. We're going to be recording this thing and we're going to be putting it out there so that people and, you know, in different parts of the world can actually experience that. And it's expected right now. It's like you're, you're now in this 24 hour 365 cycle and you don't have to hire a whole bunch of people to do that. It's like it, the whole purpose is to create this sense of, I mean, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but say uh, cultural activism in this. And in light of this, you know, the last four years have been really hard for anybody that is an immigrant, that is a different color than white, that doesn't, you know, that it's, it's talk about your, uh, let's be in a tester and make something happen. The election went in a way that uh, we're grateful for. So it's an opportunity right now to really like, you know, create something off of that springboard. And I am looking forward to getting back there again and um, and sharing that with you guys. Actually, um, this this uh, we uh, uh, sorry to cut you out, but uh, when when I see a tiny desk uh, with the Global Fest, mm -hmm. maybe you show them uh, like three days. They put together like uh, three bands a day. You know, like it was three or four days. Yeah. Uh, it was it was so beautiful. Like what I what I was thinking before, as you said, you know, live music you cannot enjoy in the you know TV. It's not the same thing. It's like all right, we 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 watching some shows. It's different. I mean, it's fine, but it's not the same thing. I I, I wouldn't think about making a festival um, online. Mm -hmm. But but after I, I show I, I see that shows. It inspired me actually. That yeah. that's right. Right after I spoke with Mehmet, saying that yeah, we were talking, but you know, it, it was so beautiful. We can do it. That, that's that's how it started. Thanks. To I, 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 <laughs> I think it's it, I think it's super important that it's happening um, coming from Drom because you guys have the legacy. It's one thing to be like you know, hey, I'm opening up this club and I'm calling it this, and then we're going to do this, and people are like, I don't know who you are, what, and even the artists, the fact that everybody stepped up because they love you. They trust you, and that you're going to do it. You're going to do it right. So you know that kind of relationship is so super important. And you know, I I talked I talked about a friend of, to a friend of mine recently who was like, "Why New York? Why New York?" And I was like, "Yeah, I know we're on the West Coast. It's different, but like New York, you've done the work. Like you know, you've proven yourself. It's like I know how can you can bring a Anatolian psychedelic rock band to New York and have a decent crowd." And, you know, you, you know how to do it. So, and you're teaching everybody else how to do that and how to bring artists in and how to make something like that work. So that's why, you know, um, I decided to jump on this, like, yay, drum, let's, let's see what we can make happen because. I mean, you do the same thing, Derek, if you ask me, I mean, programming wise, you just, your medium is radio, but you do, you have the same mission statement that we yeah, do. We just do, we do. We're, we're fellow format, travelers. And, and we do it at different time, time we intervals. Do. We do it during the day usually. We do it late in the evening. But you guys, you guys are like, you know, you're watching the door. I'm going to go live. You know, it's like I'm, I have the, I'm able to just, this is what I care about. This is what I'm doing. You're soldiers. You're out there. It's like, you know, okay, I think we're going to be okay. Let's see how it works out. You know, I've done club nights. I know that, I know that feeling. And for you guys to continue to do that and not give up and keep the place going. Yes. <laughs> Please. I think I think both of us, both Sarda and I, you know, we bring different qualities to this big experiment we call drum, and just in general global music because it's not commercial, right? It's not commercially viable like some other genres of music, yeah. and the institutional support you get is specifically for nonprofits. And our business is actually a, we're a small business; we're for profit, so we don't really benefit from public funding. We don't benefit from. Um, uh, corporate donors, you know, yeah. we certainly don't benefit from, uh, um, radio, I mean, commercial radio in states. So what we do is very much closer to the street, ticket sales and our food and drink sales. So that's pretty much only our income. And in order to make things, you know, work within that sort of like scope is, is not easy, but we're not the only ones. I mean, there's so many colleagues like us who, you know, are in that same situation trying to make something work 
with very little means. But this is to me the spirit of New York. I mean, you know, there's a reason I think why, you know, hip hop started in New York because that again, you know, those who started the genre didn't have enough money to buy music equipment and instruments and they just yeah. bought two turntables and, you know, off you go, you know, with a mic. So I think um, uh, that kind of like thinking, um, uh, the necessity is, you know, the mother of invention is very much like, you know, true in this case as well. And a lot of it is also trial and error. It's not like we knew everything when we started off. We tried some <laughs> things, it didn't work. We pivoted, we did something yeah. else and somehow we made it work all these years. Yeah. And, and you and, you know, I'll start with this, the, the, it's still there. Like, you know, I know so many places that have shut down and you're still there and you're going to come back. And so, um, I got to stress this, the GoFundMe campaign is going on right now. The event is happening the 26th to the 31st. Uh, you've got a ton, you got snarky puppy, you've got Alti Miola, get out of town. You've got, um, uh, that's amazing. You've got New York Gypsy All Stars. You've got you got a bunch of folks. I could go on and on with it. You got uh, you got Mogulat. Okay. Yep. We have two artists stuff. that just received a Grammy last weekend too. Uh, Snarky Puppy and uh, Af yeah. Arturo Farrell and the Afro Latin Jazz Orchestra. Perfect. Both Perfect. received okay. Grammys. Yeah. Uh, best of luck. This is awesome. Um, and uh, we'll be uh, broadcasting this on KXP, and then we'll put a video out there before that. And uh, guys, seriously, um, keep the faith. And uh, thank you, Derek. It's, it's, really it's awesome that you're supporting us like this. Thank and you. You know, it's, it's very important, actually. Yeah, it's well, very important we're work. we're we're a community. You know, uh, I will say, you know, I remember my first Global Fest, and where I live in Seattle, I live far away, and you know, I've been doing this for a long time but it's still far away. Like New York, everybody kind of knows each other. Uh, they actually do know, all know each other, especially in this space. Mm -hmm. So I remember going to Global Fest for the first time and I went to Drom and I just ran into all of these freaks just like me from literally all over the world. And I was like, <laughs> and it wouldn't happen if it wasn't for Drom. Like around here, like, you know, you got somebody into electronic, hip hop, uh, rock, the various forms of rock, there's a ton here. But little like global heads like myself, you know, we're little immigrants, it's like, very few and far between. And that night at Drome was like, okay, we're all a family. We're here. I remember seeing so many insane people at that time. And so I need a place like that. This is me being selfish. I need Drome to survive because I need um, I need that fix every time I'm in the city. You and I took a picture in January 2020. You were there like two yeah. months before the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, that was I know, that was insane. It was that... Uh, it was at the uh, the Canadian uh, showcase, the yeah, Mundial Friday showcase night. that was yeah, going Mundial on. Mundial showcase, yeah. Yeah, and they're the all great. And even like, you know, uh, you guys are going to do well. This is going to be fun. So I'll post that up there. Thank um, you. Get the, the post is really cool, too. It's hilarious. You always, <laughs> to, you able to, always be able to seem that like east-west uh, aesthetic working, which is bit, yes. to my heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. it's uh, so have, much, have a great night. Um, um, Thank you, Dave. You're welcome. Take care. Good luck. Best of luck. Bye. Yep. Thank you. You too. You too. Bye.